Buckle up, everyone. Speaking of Chemistry is taking a road trip through the Golden State to visit some of California's most prominent chemists. We'll be making five stops from the Bay all the way down to San Diego. Our journey begins in Silicon Valley with a startup company called Carbon that believes its chemistry-centric approach to 3D printing will change the future of manufacturing. When you look at 3D printing, this industry is, is pretty small. It's only about a $4 billion industry, and put that in context, I think the scented candle industry is a $9 billion industry, so it's small. Jody Simone and his Carbon colleagues are trying to change that. Carbon unveiled its first commercial 3D printer in April, and performance is an emphasis with this machine. Conventional 3D printers are great for creating complex, one-of-a-kind pieces, but they print slowly, and the polymers that they do print, nobody's talking about using them in cars or medical equipment. Most of these parts look and feel like cheap plastic. Carbon is boosting both print speed and the diversity of printable polymers using ultraviolet light and some crafty chemistry. Carbon's printer holds a pool of a liquid resin that cures or hardens into a solid polymer when it's exposed to ultraviolet light and just the right amount of oxygen. The team controls how much oxygen gets into the pool with a permeable window underneath the resin. Near the window, there's too much oxygen for the polymer to cure. Carbon calls this region the dead zone. But the oxygen level is just right for curing at the tippy top of the dead zone. An automated platform pulls the cured polymer upward and fresh resin can easily flow to the bottom of the part to keep curing going. The printer controls the shape of the UV light pattern to control the shape of the object. I think of what we're doing is basically uh, software controlled chemical reactions. The printer moves fast, up to 100 times as fast as conventional 3D printers. But speed is just part of Carbon's innovation. The team is printing polymers that have never been printed before. Their printed materials behave a lot like polymers currently used in car parts, medical equipment, even sneakers. Yeah, sneakers. To do this, Carbon formulates all of its own resins. Available UV curable polymers end up being hard and brittle, and ain't nobody gonna dunk wearing brittle Air Jordans. I like to joke around we sort of cheated by not using UV curable materials for the entire resin. And so our resins are, are blends of, um, of different chemistries, some that activate in the UV and others that activate with heat in a post step. And so we're able to lock the shape of the object with one set of chemistries and lock mechanical or thermal properties uh, with a secondary chemistry. So you get out of this small box of highly cross-linked um, acrylic based materials or epoxy based materials um, and into a much bigger sandbox. And each material has its own chemist behind it. So how does Carbon combine all this new chemistry with brand new 3D printing hardware and software? We suspect the office puppies have something to do with that. But more importantly, probably, chemists are working side by side with hardware and software engineers, some of whom have serious Silicon Valley credentials. AJ is one of our mechanical engineers, Robin's a mechanical engineer, and Derek's a mechanical engineer. Derek was actually in uh, Battlebots. BattleBots. Oh, nice. He was the guy that was caught cheating and threw a net on somebody else. For me, it's just thrilling. I mean, to, to be sitting there next to a Google software engineer. I mean, what chemist gets to work next to a, a Google software engineer or a Tesla hard, hardware engineer? Um, and everybody's interacting and learning from each other. And, and really, it has to be that way for it to work. Uh, we can't get siloed in our own little world and say, OK, here's the chemistry. You go make it work on the printer. There are existing technologies already making polymer parts. The big kahuna is injection molding, which can create loads and loads of the same thing at low cost. But Joe knows at least three scenarios where 3D printing beats injection molding. First and foremost is about complexity. Uh, uh, first and foremost, you think about something like this, this lattice, um, you can't injection mold this. The second case is when you need just one of something, say a medical implant or a prosthetic made for one specific person, like this hand made possible by conventional 3D printing and a volunteer group called Enable. You wouldn't make that with injection molding. And then the uh, third thing I would point to is the speed. The ability of um, you know, a flexible factory that can knock out unique designs and turn over instantly, you can't do that with injection molding. Having real material properties, printed at game-changing speeds allows us to take this very small industry of 3D printing and move into 3D manufacturing. Lots of people are excited about Carbon's potential, but not everyone is on the bandwagon. For more on that, check out this story. We would be lying, though, if we said we aren't really hoping that 3D printed shoes work out. 
imagine. Fresh to death sneakers that are guaranteed to fit with the push of a button? Head to the comments now and tell us about an area where you're excited to see 3D printing change things up. Huge thanks to Joe, Jason, and everyone at Carbon for showing us around. See you all next time when the road trip stops at Stanford to check out Jen and Bao's lab and the electronic skins her team is developing. Hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss it. I got it. How's that? Do you guys like that? Definitely. Yeah, I, I'm a good clapper. I don't know that I've ever come this way, but this is awesome.